when did you make the transition into doing things with your hands, uh, you know, building uh, uh, cabinets and, 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 and guitars? I, um, yeah, well, as soon as I uh, bought my house where we're sitting right now, this was a garage. So the first thing I did was convert it into a wood shop. So on the evenings or weekends, my hobby was building things, cabinets, whatnot. Where do you learn the wood shop stuff? I just taught myself. All soft, soft taught, yeah. And I slowly accumulated tools because you just can't go out and buy everything at once. So you start with the basic thing, a table saw. Then you add a band saw, you know, some edge sander, so on and so on. What kind of resources did you have to teach yourself? Um, <laughs> a picture. <laughs> I mean, it was sort of like Bella Cine, you give me that napkin and just building that logo. Well, if I look at something, I can pretty much figure out how to put it together. And then when did you first get the idea that you were going to build a guitar? Oh, let's see. That happened actually before my career as a designer in Chicago. I had dreamed about making a guitar for years since I started playing, you know, when I was in college. Um, so now I'm in this big wood shop and I had access to all these tools. So I bought, um, I bought a couple specialty tools needed for guitar making. Um, and I had an article in Fine Woodworking Magazine that told, taught me how to bend sides. So I, uh, I was ready to go. So I just, you know, in the evenings at that place, I would go in the shop and start making guitars. And how did it turn out? Oh, great. It did. It turned out really good. First guitar turned out pretty good. And then I built two other ones. And then I left, that's when I left uh, Connecticut, came back to this area and got a job in Chicago. So the whole idea of being a guitar maker back then got put on hold so I could get back in, into design. So when you're taking a, a, something like a guitar, which is very standardized forms, you have the Dreadnought, Grand Auditorium, um, and things like that, where, where do you find creativity? Um, where do you instill your creativity into these standardized forms? Like where do you draw your influences from and how do you take something that's very, um, it's very across the board, standardized and, and put into something new. How, how do, what, what inspires me to, to do what I do? Well, I actually, I'm following in the footprints of a couple builders that were in Chicago during the, uh, well, they started building guitars in 1900 and they stopped building guitars in 1944. Two brothers, Carl and August Larson, made very unique guitars, unlike anything any modern maker is working on. So I've collected vintage guitars before I got into making guitars. And the primary vintage I was collecting were Larson Brothers. And that fueled my fire to create what they sort of stopped doing. And I'm, now I'm carrying on in their tradition. Where do you find the balance uh, when, when you're creating a guitar, where do you find the balance in um, creating something that looks beautiful um, is, and creating something that's going to sound beautiful. Yeah, they're, right, everything has to come together. I mean, it has to look good, it has to be constructed so it can take the tension of the strings. And if you get too, car if you get too heavy in one area, then it, it's gonna lack. So everything sort of has to, to equal a whole. And that is just patience patience and a little knowing what you're doing too and um, just from studying those old instruments I can gather a lot of information and translate it into my work. Uh, do you, are, are you constantly learning? Yeah oh yeah every day every day and as if you want to make money at this you have to be fast but you can't you can't skip something you can't let speed dictate that so you're always looking how to make the perfect instrument as quickly as you can. So, and that's a learning experience every day. I mean, the arrangement of my shop, I mean, I've had this thing arranged probably five different ways until I got a nice flow going in here. So do, when you start making a guitar, do you typically have a plan for how you see the final guitar to be, or do you kind of make it up as you go, or are there times when you do both? Uh, no, I don't, pretty much, I've got it nailed from beginning to end. 
and I offer a lot of different models and since they are custom made guitars people want their input in there like I offer say a, say a, what I call a euphanon a standard model style 3 well then the customer will say well I want that body style but I want pearl inlaid on the edges and you know I want my name inlaid in the pick guard and I can take it from there from beginning to end whatever the customer desires so where do you, where, where does your artistic process start let's 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 go to the the, the, the seed the origin of your um, inspiration to build a guitar or even when someone comes to you with an order um, could you take us from sort of start to finish uh, uh, and, and how you build a guitar the process oh you mean like well I guess the, the first thing you do is you got to choose the woods yeah. choose the woods and I you know the body style I have molds for every body style that I do. So I bend the sides, as you see there, and just slowly start putting it together. But every model has got its own unique thing going into it. Do you have um, challenges typically? Like what, what's, a, what's a regularly occurring challenge you've Well, no, not, not any, in the beginning there were lots of challenges, but the more you do something, the, the more you get used to it, um, and the better you get at it. So I don't really feel pretty much the challenges have all been taken care of. Do you see your experience kind of like um, with the computer and having a transition in the computer, do you find yourself uh, uh, moving towards this kind of craft with your hands uh, um, and sort of like coming away from uh, all the work you did on the computer? Well, I still used a computer. I used a computer a lot for doing, uh, for sketching out patterns, for the bracing patterns on the tops and the back, and I can print out templates for inlay when I'm having inlay cut. Um, I use a computer for advertising, of course, in my web page. Um, and that's really about it. My, my dream right now is to have a CNC router, which is totally computer, yeah. because the way my orders are coming in, I'd like to get things out faster. And then I'm really going to dive back into the computer again and start making parts. So I'll be need to go back to my 3D rendering skills. So I'm looking forward to that. And you mentioned that sort of your, your, your clientele, the, people, uh, uh, the customers you bring in, that, that base is growing. Do you see this as a business starting to grow? And how is this as a business going to grow? Yeah, I don't see myself getting, I don't want to get huge. I'm a one man shop and I want to keep it that way. So basically, I want to just be able to produce more. And where the CNC router would be like having an extra shop guy here. But I, I can't set hours like nine to five. <laughs> and that's, that's the beauty of being self-employed as I work. I work and I'm in the shop seven days a week but some days it's 12 hours, some days it's two hours. And I have not tired of it yet. So this, this artistic process, this, this artistic endeavor that you have, um, that's also your profession, do, do those two elements ever come into conflict with each other? The fact that you have to make money on the art you have to do? No, I don't really think about the money. I think about this, I, mean, I know if I can build something and somebody's going to buy it, then the money part's taken care of. But I mean, I, I pretty much, I just, I live my life and this is just so much part of it. And it's just, there's such a balance going on that it's, it's incredible. And that could be part of the success as well. What's the wildest guitar you've ever had to make or the most challenging or um, the, 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 the guitar that kind of put you, really put you through the paces? I'm trying. I gotta. Th I, mean, I really gotta think about that. I, I. I know. Like early on, like every one of them was, because <laughs> I didn't go to school to build guitars. I just needed to make a living, so I started building guitars. So there. That was. That was a challenge. Um, some of the models that I chose to make, I have to bring in other artisans. Like the Senorita has a lot of hand engraving done on it. So the challenge was finding somebody that could pull that off and work together with me to get something done on time. So that's probably the, that's probably the biggest challenge I've been faced with. Being in the shop, um, there's, there's 
this sense of tradition and, and, and nostalgia, um, both in the, the music that inspires you and, and, and the guitars that you're making. Um, but, but at the same time, there's, there's this progressiveness with the technology you're using. You, you mentioned listening to Pandora, for example. Right, like, right. Like, <laughs> Where's my phone at? I get my email on my phone. <laughs> do, where do you see these two kind of um, contrasting uh, elements coming into play? You have this progressive and you have this uh, uh, nostalgia. Well, I think that's what I love so much about it. Yeah, I mean, if I was doing this 300 years ago, the floor would be dirt. There would be no music being played in the shop. And I just think this, I'm lucky to be alive in this era doing, I'm bringing together technology and tradition where I, I couldn't do it. I mean, I couldn't have done it then. I don't know what it's gonna be like, you know, 100 years from now. But um, yeah, it's exciting bringing the two together. And that's where graphic design and, and this all just, just come together great. So is there anything, um, you use technology and, and, and design programs to, to help build the guitars, um, but do you see anything inherently about the acoustic guitar that's going um, to change as, as, as more technology comes about? There are a lot of builders who spend all their time trying to figure out how to make the best acoustic guitar. They're, they're doing things, they're using computers to test woods, to measure woods. But the guitars that I'm building and the tradition I'm building of are the guitars that were made 75 years ago. That sound amazing. They're great. So why, I'm not gonna try to change anything. I, I'll leave, leave that up for, <laughs> for those guys that wanna, wanna, wanna do that kind of thing. But um, yeah, I mean, 75 years ago, I don't even know if they had dehumidifiers and humidifiers, and I got that, so that's a nice little bonus. But uh, well, listen, uh, thank you very much. Yeah, Derek. Time. Thanks for showing us around. Thanks for the opportunity to do this. Thank you very much. Good luck to you. Great. Thanks. <laughs>